As you've probably learned, I'm a big fan of shorthand, and since there doesn't appear to be too much information on them, I thought it would be interesting to do a historical overview. Everything appears to have started in 1966 with the 166.024 fifth generation Omega Seamaster 300. Now, incidentally, even though it was called a 300, it was only advertised to be waterproof to 200 meters. The British Ministry of Defense took delivery of the swatch one year later. They subsequently modified it with fixed lug bars, a tritium circle on the dial, and case back engravings. Now, meanwhile, another Swiss company, Certina, also started using the same sword hands. The first model they used it was for their DSPH 200 meter watch in 1967. They also used the hands on their DS2 and DS3 dive watches in the 70s. The latter was even used by the Royal Australian Navy. The next step in the chain is Rolex, who also sold watches to the British military. Their famous mill subs of the 70s also had to be modified for the Ministry of Defense. That's right, the stock Mercedes hands were replaced with, you guessed it, sword hands on the 5517 and sometimes on the 5513. This was because the Seamaster 300 had become the gold standard as per the 1971 DEF STAN 66-4 guidelines. Omega also released a few sword hand models in the 70s, as seen in this ad. More to the point, they even adapted the hour hand to become the minute hand in the Ploprof 600. Fast forwarding to present day, and you have the CWC Royal Navy reissue that I recently reviewed. The reason it has those hands is because it was originally built to the same Ministry of Defense standards. There was also the oddball Bowman Mercier 1000 meter yellow diver that has subsequently become a cult classic. Given all of this, I do wonder if Rolex won't do a mill sub reissue because the sword hands were an Omega design. Regardless, it would be nice if some company used them again. Uh, that's about it for this review, and as usual, thanks for watching.